as an 18-year-old, I let my mistakes kind of take over my life. I was 0.5 credits away from completing high school, and I didn't do it. I got pregnant, and I was the main one working, so I did what I had to do to survive. Sentía que la escuela no era para mí. Most of my family, they never graduated high school or even let alone go to college, so I'm trying to break that barrier. My family never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew what I could become and who I could become as a person. Every day after work, went straight to school, studied hard, and, and it paid off. Sentí como que si quiero cambiar el mundo, tengo que cambiar a mí primero. I could not have gone my diploma without my family. Mi consejera, ella fue lo máximo para mí porque me ayudó mucho con todo. I've been given an opportunity and I'm just thankful for it. Yeah, it's hard, but keep on going and keep on trying. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence and now I feel unstoppable. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome, everyone. My name is Stephanie Bird, and I serve with Cleveland Division of Water as Assistant Administrator and actually have been with this program since its inception in 2006. Uh, I've had the pleasure and privilege um, to manage this program on behalf of the Department of Public Utilities, City of Cleveland, and Mayor Frank Jackson. Um, it has been a pleasure and actually a blessing. Um, I love, I call it a, a passion of mine, I guess, to work with uh, the youth of the City of Cleveland. Um, a couple things that I want to mention this morning. Um, we hired actually 201 youth this year, um, which is great. We have grown from just uh, a group of 50 youth painting fire hydrants to, as I mentioned before, over 200 youth with 12 teams and probably about 19 internships. And if I don't say it enough, I want to say thank you to every Department of Public Utilities employee, both with Cleveland Division of Water, Division of Water Pollution Control, uh, Cleveland Public Power, you have always stepped up whenever we've asked for you to help mentor a youth. You've done that. You've created internships. We've heard such positive feedback. You're going to hear the youth give presentations today. As I was listening to their presentations, uh, you're going to be blown away by the impressions that you've made uh, with these young folks. A couple things I want to mention today. I mentioned um, a little bit with the stats. Um, you have on your tables a copy, obviously, of the program. The magazine, uh, we mentioned that we have a youth communication team um, that comprises of the journalism team. They've written over 32 articles that are that is within the magazine. You have the graphic arts team that provided the graphic for that, also for the video. And as you look around, you'll see posters that the graphic arts youth put together as well uh, that focuses on the three divisions and on the environment, the city of Cleveland. Um, also, you'll be seeing uh, videos, two videos actually today. I think we started something last year with a music video, so not only will you see our traditional commemorative video, but also a music video, and I think you'll be blown away by what you see with that as well today. Um, again, as you know, this is an eight-week program. It seems like we just started just yesterday. Um, I want to thank, obviously, Public Hall and their personnel for all the help. We've used their rooms for training for the youth. We've had what we call the career uh, pathways where we actually had probably about 10 different Cleveland professionals from Cleveland police representatives who came in, folks representing STEM, uh, Cleveland water, uh, water plant operator distribution, just so, and we also had six local colleges that came uh, and visited with the youth as well. What I'd like to do is uh, move along with the program. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention, uh, I wanted to thank, uh, I see Dave Barga here, I wanted to thank the Department of Economic Development. I, I mentioned we've been here for 13 years, but for seven years we've had the honor to actually host um, College Credit Plus, or it used to be called Post-Secondary Enrollment Options Program, but a college class uh, with Cleveland State University. 
where our youth actually earned four credit hours from Cleveland State this year. So I want to give our youth a hand. And also today we've got a couple of guest speakers, which you'll hear uh, momentarily. Uh, we have a guest speaker from NASA this morning to speak on STEM careers. And we also have a speaker from the Cavaliers organization as well. Okay. I'd like to introduce Marcus Rutledge, if you come forward, please. Marcus Rutledge, he, Rutledge excuse me, Jr., just graduated from Cleveland, Catholic, Cleveland Central Catholic, excuse me. And uh, he is going to be singing the national anthem, so if you would all rise, please, while he sings. rising senior um, at the Cleveland School of the Arts. She is also a part of the, uh, I actually call it YCT or the Youth Communications Team. She is a part of the journalism team. Um, then following her will be a special presentation by Serenity Harris and Jakia Johnson from the 3D Design Team. Without further ado, let me introduce Ari Bailey. Morning. Before we get started, I would like to first thank Mayor Frank G. Jackson for creating such a substantial opportunity for the youth of Cleveland. Often, the talent the youth possess goes unnoticed. This program provides a safe space for that talent to be showcased. Thirteen years ago, Mayor Frank G. Jackson took a tremendous leap of faith on the youth. To this day, the skills taught and practiced here still upholds that same dignity since the program began. The SYEP Summer Youth Employment Program way of life will continue to carry the youth way into their adult lives and eventually lead them to finding not only a job but a career. Careers that are often overlooked by society. Careers that our everyday modern lives depend on. Consider this. The water that we use on a day-to-day -day basis has to be treated. 
And in the future, who will treat that water? The youth that train every day and are becoming equipped with the skills to do so. Thank you for your time. Now to the podium, the man behind it all, Mayor Frank G. Jackson. Good morning. Good morning. And how are you this morning? Good, good. Um, first of all, I want to really congratulate all of you for um, being part of the program and, and being able to participate. But most of all, I want to thank you for your completion of the program and because that is what is important. I know when um, I talked to then Director Chach at that time, Director of Utilities, about creating the program. And one of the things we wanted to do was to ensure success and really create uh, the argument that this is a viable approach to uh, giving young people an opportunity not only to make some money, but giving them an opportunity to have exposure to something they would never have exposure to but for this program. But, but in order for that to happen, that meant that the young people who participate in the program had to do well. They had to perform. They had to demonstrate that they were interested. So that's why I'm thanking you, because uh, even though uh, I and a couple of other people were the creators of the program, you were the ones who sustain it. You are the ones who make it possible for us to say, let's do this again, and no one questions whether or not we should do it again because of the good work and, and, and the effort and the commitment that you have put into it. So again, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are presenting this shirt to Mayor G. Frank Jackson. Created by graphic design, very on Zaire Jordan. Jordan, yep. All right. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. things you see this poster here I mentioned the youth communication team they came up with uh, well you'll hear reverberated throughout their speeches and the videos today a superhero a heroine or new to me she hero okay so initially I thought because of the movies that have been out Marvel comics and Black Panther I'm thinking how do they come up with this theme of superhero well, little did I know that the Department of Public Utilities, the poster that we have here uh, for Team Heroes Together, Everyone Achieves More, this was hanging outside of the room where they work. And so this inspired them to come up with a theme of superhero. So you will see this. So I wanted to make sure you understood that. And without further ado, we are going to roll the first video. Enjoy. fast because no one's ever like seen a clear visual of it. Right. They really couldn't give a good description but we did get that one picture though uh, of what he thought yeah. she looked like or he or she looked like. The people who worked on the beach, they actually saw him and worked with him. Superhero. Where? Well, first off, what's your first and last name, your program, and what you do for your program? Hi, my name is Taiwan Tyson, and I work with Water Cycle. And what we do is we go to beaches all around Cleveland and help make them look cleaner. The reason we do this is because 
things like plastic and non-degradable things by nature are stuck in nature and we have to remove them by ourselves because no one else will do that. And if, if no one else will do that, then it'll just accumulate. I even seen those tiny little plastic that they keep talking about that's inside the water. They're like really, really tiny and you barely can pick them up. But I, I, pick, I picked a few up, but they weren't, they weren't as small as they're talking about that you can't see, but I picked them up. My name is Ayman Moss. I'm on the rain gardening team. Uh, I like this team the most because they're helping the community look better and it's a good activity to do. Uh, my name is Sincere and I work on fire hydrants. What I do on fire hydrants is I prefer this old fire hydrant that might be cracked and painted and uh, work on refurbishing them back to tip top shape so that the fire may be easily accessed and see them. So that if there's a fire, they have no trouble looking for them because every second man is in the fire. My name is Kish, I'm still in videography. And what I do in videography, I edit. I edit videos that we go, so we take, we go to sites every day, and we uh, film things like other groups doing this, like water cycles doing their jobs, and then we go back to our building called the Taz Building, and we um, edit the stuff that we filmed that day. My name is Cheryl Anderson, and I am in journalism, and we write papers and edits and build typing skills. Hi, my name is Isaiah McClendon, and uh, I'm a part of the 3D modeling team and we are making a 3D model of the water cycle and how it gets from Lake Erie uh, to our houses and from our houses to Lake Erie. Hey you guys, my name is Autumn Sawyer. I am in the College Credit Plus program. For the College Credit Plus program, we are um, taking classes through Cleveland State at the WPC building. Not only are we taking classes, but another part of the program is doing research on like parcels that we're given for the new upcoming opportunity corridor for companies to see if they want to actually build on that land. My name is Trey Mo. My name is Kayla. And we're uh, legal dumping. And we go around clean up Cleveland. My name is Jordan Wilson, and I'm a part of the Mayor Frank Jackson Summer Youth Employment Program and it's all different types of group. I'm in DOW maintenance, and we are setting up a green infrastructure. What can you tell us about the superhero? Y'all see this picture right here? This is exactly what I seen, taking stuff away from me. It was good, it was taking away the bad things away from the uh, environment that didn't need to be there anyway, so this is a superhero that I created to to mimic the one that was there picking up stuff. So powerful that nobody even knows what she looks like or what she does, honestly. She's just here and then she's gone. But that's just what I think. Whoa, it was this anonymous superhero. I didn't even get to see her. But like, she was real intelligent and she helped me find the research for like my lands that I was surveying. Man. I didn't really get to see her, but I think she was real beautiful, and I think she was really intelligent, and she really helped me a lot. The superhero can be a real nice person, you know? It doesn't have to involve powers or anything, we just that, like, do something good for the community and everything. One day, I was just chilling, and, uh, seeing, like, a girl digging, like, dirt. And feel, she showed me how to, like, plant flowers, and here I am today. The superhero actually helped us print our 3D model like she's very good at 3D modeling. 
I don't know how, like how she's that good, but she's pretty good at it. Uh, we even printed a whole mango, and I didn't even know you could print food. It's a superhero. Um, she comes and she helps clean up and gives us the strength to finish the job well. She helped put down the rock paths and watered the garden. So there was one time I went hooping, and on the way back home, this bridge had fell, but then there was a superhero that she came out of nowhere and cleaned it up in like two seconds. And then before I could even thank her, she just left like that. Would you happen to know the name of the superhero? No. 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 So, what would you call the superhero? The land protector. The land protector. The land protector. Land protector. The land protector. The land protector. So my name is Leela Farciola. I'm actually the communications assistant. And to me, the land protector, she's basically Robin to Batman. Like you don't see her, but you know she's done her work because of all the things that like happen around us, all the good things that are happening versus the bad. So to me, she's kind of like that invisible hero that's just everywhere all at once without you actually being able to see her.
streets, we just want to see it clean. If you love your city, then you got to help me breathe. Showing respect. get a treat out of that. We started our inaugural last year and I, they've made a big improvement. Let's give them one more hand. Okay, moving right along with the program with our acknowledgments. It takes a village to put this together. Um, Department of Public Utilities, um, we appreciate our executive leadership and the support that they give us. And I'd like to introduce at this time our interim assistant director, Deborah Mitchell. Thank you, Stephanie. Wow, how can I follow that? We need to publish that video or something. Do we have plans for that? YouTube, okay, YouTube. Wow, oh, I am so proud to be part of Public Utilities. I am so proud to be, to serve as the Interim Assistant Director and to work with Mayor Frank G. Jackson to have such a great project such as this uh, go on for what, 13 years now? So, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here today to celebrate the 13th year of Mayor Frank Jackson's Summer Youth Employment Program. Every year, the Department of Public Utilities looks forward to our involvement in this outstanding program, as you've seen. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to invest in the young people in our community, as well as develop a future workforce for the Department of Public Utilities. Employees at Cleveland Water, Water Pollution Control, and Cleveland Public Power created 12 team projects and 19 <coughs> internships for the youth this summer. These programs provided the youth with awareness of the experience in traditional and non-traditional careers. Because everybody's not going to go to college, right? That's, but we're here to uh, take you in, just in case you don't do that. Uh, and awareness of our environment, which the video so poignantly uh, let us know. It, it's all about the green, it's all about the L-A-N-D. And appreciation for our uh, greatest re resource, Lake Erie, and opportunities for youth to serve the community. Not only are we able to create these opportunities for the youth, but through them, our employees get to provide mentorship, guidance, as well as support. We also, get to observe the youth take pride in their hard work and develop their sense of discipline and responsibility. Truly, we, we truly provide benefits to everyone involved. I know DPU employees as well as myself enjoy and benefit from the program such um, just as much as the youth. So I'm so excited to see where the participants from this summer's program move into onto and hope to see several of them as employees of the Department of Public Utilities. So I'm going to go off script a little bit. I read that. I am going to, and this is short. She told me to keep it short because this is real short. This is a poem that someone left me when I was just your age. You, it's just two words. Go on. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Go on, go on, go on. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Go on, go on, go on. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'd say probably for the 12 or the 13 years, we have a wonderful partner with the Northeast, Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. We started out with rain gardens and also with uh, the teams putting together uh, the rain barrels as well. And it's gone well. We've gone to basically assembling, but we still assemble the rain barrels uh, where they used to go and install them in the homes. And now we've had probably about maybe a dozen or so workshops this year. Uh, so we appreciate the support of Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. Sometimes it's a little hard for me to say. So I'll say the Sewer District for short. Uh, we have coming this morning Constance Hogg. Let's welcome her, please. Well, I have neither a video nor a poem. 
So here I am. But I do have my heart heartfelt congratulations to give all of the young people who participated in this wonderful program this summer. We are so grateful to Mayor Jackson for the for creation of this program, for our former CEO, Julius Chach, um, another visionary around the development of this program. So we're very, very happy to be a part of it. We've been a part of it um, for a number of years, and we hope to continue. I can't think of a more important time in history for us all to support the young people in our communities. And this program does exactly that. So to the YOU leadership and uh, individual fam uh, staff members, congratulations to you. So good luck to all the students. We um, are very, very excited about bringing on two of the YOU students here today into our uh, Good Neighbor Ambassador program. They start with us on Monday morning, so we're looking forward to seeing them there. So thank you very much, and congratulations, and thank you to Mayor Jackson. YOU, what can I say, Youth Opportunities Unlimited. There is no way that we could put on this program without Youth Opportunities Unlimited. The City of Cleveland contracts with Youth Opportunities Unlimited, and they supply all, or provide, I should say, all of the leadership our program manager, Darren Suttles, in the back way, Darren. He's been with us for several years. Um, and actually, I think we stepped up our game a little bit with Darren, uh, a little bit younger, but when it comes to technology and creativity, he's been great. Uh, start out, I see Brenda Stark in the audience as well. Kind of started out with Dominique Murray as well. And Craig Doran has been with us every step of the way. In fact, I remember the first meeting we had over at City Hall. Uh, it was funny when uh, the mayor was elected and he went to Chach and said, what can we do to hire kids? And Chach said, why don't we have them paint fire hydrants? So my assistant uh, commissioner at the time, Dwight Wilson, came back and he said, they want to know what do we do? Okay, well, we need a proposal, we need X, Y, Z. So next thing I knew, I was going over to City Hall, meeting with Trudy Hutchison and Craig Dorn and Natoya Walker. Um, they have been great. Uh, like I said, there's no way we could put this on. Can I have all the YOU supervisors and team leads stand, please? I want to give you a round of applause. I mean, they come on early. We do training with our supervisors for first day training, how to deal with the youth. And they are front line out there with our youth in the community. Um, we, you know, I don't know if it's year 13 or what, we have had our challenges, but we have rose to the occasion and it's been successful. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Craig Dorn, who is the CEO of Youth Opportunities Unlimited. It's an honor to be here and I just want to say YOU does many, many things. We do summer jobs, we do in-school programs, we do train for 18 to 24 year olds. This is one of my favorite programs, and I love it so much for a lot of reasons. But really, the best way to exemplify how I love it is that fabulous video, which I want us all to make sure goes viral. That really explains and captures everything about how great this program is. You not only have a job, you're learning skills, and you're making Cleveland a better community, which you're going to hear a lot more about today. I just want to acknowledge a couple of people. First of all, Stephanie, and I don't know if anyone's acknowledged yet, Stephanie has been the rock of this program from that very first meeting in City Hall 13 years ago. Also, I do want to acknowledge again Darren, who all year, his only job is to make this program great, and he continues to do that with creativity and innovation. Also acknowledge our Director of Work Experiences, Brenda Stark, who's here, and certainly thank the Mayor. I know a lot of people thank the Mayor, but you may not realize how valuable he is. Many, many leaders don't necessarily make summer job a priority, but Mayor Jackson does and has since the moment he was elected, and thank you to him. And most of all, thank you to all the students and youth here today, because you're what makes the program great. Thank you. I need to make a slight change in the program. I'm going to have three of the youth come up before our first guest speaker. Um, I am going to, I'm so new. Uh, the first speaker that we're going to have is Janae Gallat, and she is an intern with WPC Project Management. How y'all doing? 
My name is Jonah Gallet. I'm a senior and I attend Design Lab Early College High School. My 2018 internship experience with Mayor Frank G. Jackson's Summer Youth Employment Program was a grateful opportunity. I have learned more and how to exceed every day. My mentor, Oz Azali, has shared some of his great wisdom and experience with me. Working with the project manager has taught me how to manage everything I do in life. That to reach my goals is a process step by step. The skills provided from my mentor was learning how to analyze data through Excel to become better in communication and how to be a leader at all times. Referring to these skills, I have found determination in my character as a young student. The biggest part in life to get where you need to go is through communication. Communication is a powerful source which also makes up a team. And as a team, my mentor and I have done great in managing my work. I would like to take this experience and use it in future references so that I can become a great engineer. Working for the City of Cleveland Department of Public Utilities, Division of Water Pollution Control has guided me towards experienced engineers, ones who are also in the civil industry. Engineers Cecilia Mazi and Jennifer Herr are fantastic role models for prospective engineers such as myself. In conclusion, I would like to say thank you, Mayor Frank G. Jackson. Okay, good morning. My name is Shiana Cummings, and I'm an upcoming sophomore at Youngstown State University, majoring in exercise science. The reason I applied to become an intern at the Mayor's Summer Youth Program because I heard it was a great program and I wanted to be a part of it. Throughout these eight weeks, I have learned how to work well with different people. The Mayor's Summer Youth Program were, gave me connections that I could later use in life, like when Latoya Smith from the Black Professionals Association Charitable Foundation stated that her foundation gives away tons of scholarships each year. I also learned the importance of the different water branches, like the Division Water Pollution Control, which is the department I was assigned to. The WPC is responsible for managing the sanitary sewage and storm water collection in the city of Cleveland. Before I began the Mayor's Summer Youth Program, I was filled with two types of emotions. I was excited and skeptical. Excited because I was going to be working at a new job and meeting new people, but skeptical because I didn't really know what to expect. I felt as if the extracurricular activities they had me participate in were, all, were going to be all of no good use to me because I was older and farther, further along than the others. I soon realized that was not the case at all. The resume clinic was most helpful to me because I learned more than I knew before and they helped me add things to my resume I didn't know belonged. On my first day of work, I really didn't feel a specific way. I was ready to get straight to it. When I got to WPC and met my mentor, Ryan Lopez, he made me feel so comfortable right off the bat. He gave me a tour around the building and introduced me to a lot of people. He showed me my little office space I would be working in and filing the abundance amount of inspector work request forms and sewer maintenance work orders that came in every day. After we got the important things out the way, Ryan and I just talked. We talked about life, his and mine. The one thing I like most about Ryan is that he actually cared about my thoughts and he was interested in getting to know me. We shared things like our college experience. He asked me if I participated in sports and he shared how proud of dad he is of his two kids. He said his son is a really, really smart, is really, really smart and it surprises him sometimes and his daughter is an amazing softball player. I smile hearing him talk about his kids and how proud he is because it made me think of my father and how he supports me in any and everything I do. I would definitely recommend the Mayor's Summer Youth Program to other students because it's a great way to link teens and young adults like myself to different work experiences and training on how to be a great employee and what employees expect. There's one big takeaway I got from the Mayor's Summer Youth Program and working at WPC, and that is no job is too big. Everywhere you go, there's something to learn and someone ready to teach. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Dietrich Walker Jr. and I completed my internship as an engineer at Cleveland Public Power 1300 Lakeside. It was a very educating and knowledgeable experience. During this process, I learned technical and precise techniques to use commercial computer-aided design and drafting software by the name of AutoCAD, which is highly integrated in Cleveland Public Power's com company. AutoCAD is a software that creates accurate and detailed drawings, illustrations, and blueprints for buildings, bridges, computer chips, work sites, etc. During this time, I was presented with my own personal desk, computer, and private workspace where 95% of my tasks were completed. In addition to this, I was placed around many different types and breeds of individuals with different outlooks to life and many knowledge and wisdom willing to be shared. I am highly thankful and appreciative for this opportunity and for the help it got me and possibly others on getting a foot in the door towards our career paths of choice. 
As of now, I would like to end my speech by passing along some food for your thoughts and wisdom to my fellow, fellow youth that helps me throughout my journey. Think about the future, not the now. Start building your wealth now. 10% food, 10% assets, 20% saved. Always make sure you spend less than you make. Invest in yourself early because you are your greatest resource to accumulate wealth. Success is 90% who you know, 10% what you know. Make budgets built off your earnings and always be open-minded to new ventures and opportunities. Once again, my name is Dietrich Walker Jr. and I completed my internship for the Summer Youth Employment Program at 1300 Lakeside Cleveland Public Power. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon. My name is Adeline Camacho and I, I've worked in eight, I've worked in an eight week intern with Millie at CPP. During this program, I did administration work in an office environment. I've learned how to be responsible for my own projects and work independently. Millie, my mentor, has inspired me to want to work for my city and help more. She's very caring and always helping others, even if she doesn't have to. I just want to thank her for everything she's taught me and done for me. I also want to thank this program for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Did I tell you we had some great uh, speeches today? You're going to hear more. Uh, but at this time, what I'd like to do is to introduce the young lady that's going to be introducing our first guest speaker this morning. Her name is Javana White. Javana, okay, there you go. Okay. Javana will be entering the 10th grade next year at Euclid High School. Javana writes for her school newspaper and is still considering what her career aspirations will be. I also heard that Javana did a great job with uh, the Rain Barrel team. Um, I hear that uh, actually the Rain Barrel team, all the workshops that they did, they had a lot of great comments. The kids were good. They uh, taught the, um, the residents the purpose of a rain barrel and how to install it to the diverter and one, just basically just saving on water um, and getting credits through Northeast Ohio Region Sewer District. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to ask Javon to come up and introduce our first guest speaker. Hi, everyone. My name is Giovanna White, and our next speaker is a true Cleveland hidden figure. Liza Lynn Smith grew up in Detroit and showed her talents for science and math early on. When she was only in the fifth grade, she tested the highest math score in her whole school. She first received her Bachelor's of Science in Mechanical Engineering from the University of Michigan, then went on to receive her Master's in Mechanical Engineering at the North Carolina's Agricultural and Technical State University. She has been working with NASA for about 14 years as an aerospace engineer. She uses her time to get involved with the community and help young kids get into STEM. Ms. Smith is the president of the Northeast Ohio chapter of the National Society of Black Engineers, which teaches high school students about engineering. In addition, she serves as a mentor with the Footprints for Girls, which offers role models for at-risk female students. She also wrote her own book called Calculate Your Savings, which talks about helping people determine which money saving strategies are the best for their lives. Liza Lynn does it all. She's a mother, an author, engineer, and she is a role model for young people everywhere. Please help me welcome Liza Lynn Smith. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, Ms. Giovanna. Giovanna. And thank you all for having me. Thank you, Stephanie, for inviting me, and Ramona for um, inviting me out to speak today. And it's been such a pleasure to hear about the wonderful things that you all are working on and have done to impact the city of Cleveland. Go to the next. <laughs> the next slide. Yeah, so as he's pulling that up, as she stated, I have been at the NASA Glenn Research Center for about 14 years now, 
working on various um, aircraft and spacecraft related projects. And um, it's been a wonderful experience living here near and in the city of Cleveland for the last 14 years. Um, so she just gave this background information. I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan, which is a lot like Cleveland in many ways in terms of some of the challenges and um, setbacks that it has had in recent years due to certain industries not progressing as, um, as has been expected. So we face some of, the some of the similar challenges in Cleveland that I experienced in, as a student growing up in Detroit. So a lot of things that you guys have experienced I can relate to as well. But despite that, I went on to the University of Michigan and attained a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. Go blue. <laughs> and then went on to North Carolina Agriculture and Technical State University where I received a master's degree in the same field. I did have an internship at NASA Langley, which if you saw the movie Hidden Figures, the story was based on um, Katherine Johnson's career there at that um, NASA center in, in Hampton, Virginia. So I worked there for one summer and then I came here in 2004 and I've been here ever since. So I'm here today to talk to you guys about STEM. As some of you have said today and may have experienced this summer, STEM stands for um, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And it's a very important field. And I'm gonna go into a little bit of that today in terms of why STEM is important. The first thing that makes STEM important is because it, it impacts every area of our lives, especially growing up in this time it's like a time like never before. Information is constantly at your fingertips and as most of you have experienced, your phone is always in your hand. So social, social media and smartphones, those were things that were developed by STEM, by STEM fields, the um, engineering, computer science, and that kind of um, background is what gives you the ability to create those things. And as we move forward and the, the next coming years, those things are become, becoming even more important. So having a background in STEM and having an education in those fields will help you as you progress in, the, in your careers. So people that work in the STEM fields, they develop technologies that make services like online shopping. How many people use Amazon? Everybody, basically. GPS, text messages, live video streaming, what is it, Snapchat these days? Or the, what's the new one, Musical.ly? I don't know. Twitter, all these, all these applications that we take for granted that we can just use at our fingertips, someone had to design them. Someone had to have the math and the science skills to create that for us to use. And that's something that you guys can, uh, eventually when you get to college and study those things, you can become someone that develops the next big app, who knows? So STEM also, um, a STEM education has helped to develop team working and problem solving skills, which I'm sure how many people had problems in their teams this summer? No one? Oh, okay, that's new. I see a few hands. So yes, anytime you're working with different people from different schools, different backgrounds, you're going to have issues that come up. So when you're in the STEM field, we're, we're taught to, to, to have the skills to work through those with Communication, someone mentioned that earlier, you have to be able to communicate not only verbally, but um, writing it out. You have to be able to present your ideas to different people. They may have a different idea than you. You have to come together as a team to design something that works, that meets your objectives, and that utilizes every team member. And it's, it's a lot that comes into play. So as an engineer or someone that works in the STEM field, you have to use all of those skills that you're learning in the classroom in your job and in different teams. So that's a big part of being in STEM to solve the problems. And also the college degrees that you can get in, in the STEM field, they provide a solid foundation for any career imaginable. A lot of people go to school for uh, STEM, a STEM related field, and then they go on to study law or medicine or become an astronaut. It's so many different things that you can do when you have that foundation in uh, science or engineering. And lastly, STEM careers, they help to improve lives. So just like we talked about earlier, the different social media aspects of our life, which have become very important, STEM also impacts um, things like prosthetic limbs. So you can go be and become a biomedical engineer and design something that someone can use in or on their body, like a, a pacemaker or a, 
a limb after something happened where they had to lose their limb. So there are a lot of different things you can do with the STEM education. So for me personally, as an aerospace engineer, aerospace engineering is the primary branch of engineering concerned with the research, analysis, design, development, construction, testing, science, and technology of aircraft and spacecraft. And many aerospace engineers, they have a background in mechanical or civil engineering, and they apply those skills to flight hardware. So my degrees are in mechanical engineering. Most of the people that I work with have degrees in mechanical engineering, but we work in the aerospace engineering field. And here are a few of the different types of experiments and vehicles that you may find yourself working on as an aerospace engineer. So you work on spacecraft, airplanes, rockets, different solar panels, rovers for outer space or different planets, and also doing test flights. So here, this is me last year. I'm working in a lab at NASA. So a lot of what engineers do is test equipment that will later be used on an aircraft or a spacecraft. So I'm setting up a, a test that was done there. And this is another big part of what I do personally as an aerospace engineer, and that is performing analysis on software programs. So I sit at a computer and I apply different flight conditions, different loads to certain parts to see if they will su survive flight. And we also work directly with astronauts conducting tests to make sure that when they go on their missions, the equipment that we're designing for them will perform satisfactor satisfactorily. And here is a vehicle that I personally worked on. Um, I'm showing the arrow pointing to these fairings. That's what I had the opportunity to work on directly. And this was for a test flight that happened a few years ago in 2014. And the actual Orion flight for, um, it's called EM-1, is going to fly in 2020. That's the goal. So, so I want to also talk to you today about what you can do to prepare yourself to launch your career into a STEM field, or really any field. Um, go on to the next slide. So, And a lot of this is you already have experience being in this wonderful program. You've had the opportunity to experience um, a lot of these things that you can do to prepare yourself. So the first one is being a well-rounded person. So you have to be able to interact with people from different backgrounds. Strive for academic excellence, and especially in math and science. So I'm sure you guys are doing that. Work with teams, be able to work well with others and not be um, combative and always expect things to go your way. Sometimes you have to compromise to get the goal accomplished. Also have community involvement. Um, be self-driven, and that's a big one because as you become older, you are going to have to become the CEO of your life. You can't always rely on someone to have to tell you things to do. You have to take more initiative and look for opportunities yourself and not be afraid to step out there and take those risks and challenges. Also, you have to demonstrate perse perseverance, and I can speak to this firsthand as an engineering student. There will be challenges, there will be setbacks, there will be obstacles in your way, no matter what career you go into, no matter what, whether you go into college, a trade, military, whatever you pursue, you're going to have to have determination. You can't um, expect everything to go right 100% of the time, and you have to take those as opportunities to reassess what you're doing, reassess who is around you, reassess your whole life, and when you um, do that, you're able to propel to success. Also, sharpen your problem-solving skills and be bold and ask for help when needed. That's another big one. A lot of times, as young people, as teenagers, we think, okay, I can't do it, and we kind of shut things down, but really that's an opportunity to seek help, like your mentors, your parents, your counselors. There are a lot of adults in your lives who will take notice of your initiative and will be willing to help you if you're open to that. And um, because adults, we want to help. We want to provide opportunities for students 
and for young people. And that's why you see the room filled here today with adults who are here to support you. But the important thing for you is to be accepting and open of that help because we, no one knows it all. We think we do when we're teenagers, but we don't. So you have to be open. Um, and here are a few other opportunities that I participated in as a young people. I'm sure there are many opportunities similar to this um, in your lives, and that's, those, these are things that you can look for to participate in if you're interested in pursuing a STEM career. Math competition, science fairs, has anybody been in a math competition or science fair? No, do they still have those? Yeah, I see a few of you. So those are good ways to even find out if you want to go into a, a certain career is to just try it. I think that's my last, is that the last slide? Oh, okay, so in summary, the STEM education is very important because it impacts all of our lives in so many seen and unseen ways. And you have the power to make yourself the best and be the most well-rounded candidate for your STEM career. By following these um, steps and many others, I'm sure you can look around you and find, just like you were able to participate in this excellent opportunity for the, um, the city of Cleveland with Mayor Jackson's program. So I just want to thank you all again for having me. And best wishes for all your careers in the future. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move right along. Uh, we did move around in the program a little bit. Uh, we're going to start with Jordan Rose, but I need the rest of the young folks that follow. If you remember the persons that you followed, um, Damiana, Zoe, Greg, Isaiah, Caitlin, Will, Carlos, and Nadia, if you would line up here um, while uh, Jordan is speaking. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Jordan Rose. I am a part of the 2018 Employment of Mayor Frank G. Jackson Summer Youth Employment Program. I worked on the fire hydrants team. Some of the things that I learned and enjoyed was teamwork and financial literacy, specifically the difference between gross and net pay. I was able to see new areas of Cleveland that I usually would not be exposed to. I also enjoyed our trips to the fire station 28, where I was able to try on safety gear, the trip, and also the trip to the fire museum, where I, where I read about the history of the fire department. Also my visit to Sharon Williams, I had no clue that they created the yellow for the school buses and the brown for the UPS trucks. To end on this, I would like to say thank you to the city of, Cle of Cleveland and the mayor, Frank G. Jackson Summer Youth Employment Program. Also, a big thanks to my teammates and another thanks to my supervisor, Ms. Nika Newsom. Thank you. Hello and good morning to you all. My name is Damiana. Oh my God. I attend Lincoln West High School, and I am an upcoming junior. I'm a part of the underpass team with my five coworkers and two supervisors, Brandon and Travis. Our job is to make sure no debris gets into our sewer systems, and how we do that is go to the not-so-clean bridges in our community that folks dirty up and sweep up all the trash and pick, up, pick out all the weeds. Once everything is swept up, we work together to bag up the trash to weigh the bags. After weighing the bags, our job is done for the day. I know, I know that may sound easy, but maybe next time you're walking under a bridge, you should take the time to actually look at it and instead of littering, be considerate and pick up something to help us because our job wasn't easy at all. Honestly, picking up one little bag of one little empty bag of chips off the ground would make our job a lot easier than you think. By doing that, you're not only helping me and my coworkers, you're also helping the appearance and value of our city look good. 
I want to thank not only my supervisors and coworkers for being a great team, but also Mayor Frank Jackson for giving me the opportunity to have this work experience. Hello, my name is Zoe Shell. I'm going to be a senior at Normandy this year, and I was part of the Rain Barrel team. During my time with this program and with the Rain Barrel team, the word I was frequently using to describe it was as superb. It was a great experience. It was not surprising to me that it's been 10 amazing years for the Rain Barrel program. The program is partnered with the Northeast Ohio Regional Surrey District, with which I think Ms. Bird recent, uh, said previously, and the Mayor's Office of Sustainability. And with their support, we actually have been able to distribute more than 4,500 rain barrels to people in the city of Cleveland, um, representing, representing an investment of over $250,000 from the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District and the Cleveland Water to support at-home water, uh, stormwater management. My whole experience with the rain barrel team in the program has been very knowledgeable. I learned a lot. I learned everything someone should learn during their first job. I learned the value of teamwork, patience, the privilege of being employed, and the importance of respect. Those skills and lessons have not only impacted my professional life as well as they have also impacted my personal life. And to thank for those many amazing experiences and lessons, I have Mayor Frey Jackson and the amazing people of the Summer Youth Employment Program. Thank you. Hi, my name is Greg and I'm an up and coming sophomore at Reynoldsburg High School. This summer I worked on the Rain Barrel team for the Summer Youth Employment Program and before I started the program I was doubtful that I would enjoy working over this summer. But despite my initial thoughts, the program surprised me with all the opportunities they offered that I enjoyed doing. I got to work and make friendships with people my age, get to know the people in my community, build a resume to use in the near future and give back to the community I grew up in by building Rain Barrels. This summer I learned a lot about environmental issues in the city of Cleveland and how our jobs will help. Cleveland faces problems with stormwater runoff, which creates erosion and picks up pollutants that go into our water source, Lake Erie. These type of pollutants in our water source are bad, of course, because we use this water every day to drink, shower, and use. My job was to construct and distribute the rain barrels that would help solve these issues. Rain barrels have solved this issue by collecting the rain water when it falls, reducing runoff into our water. Rain barrels also help save you money and makes you an efficient water user without even trying. I had a lot of fun working here because I stayed active during my summer by doing our community workshops, environmental field trips, building rain barrels, and learning how I can help the environment. Working, working on the rain barrel team was a great first job to have, and I would recommend anybody join me next year at Mayor Jackson's program. I gained work experience, communication skills, and earned money by doing something interesting and worthwhile over the summer. But most importantly, I had a great time doing it and learned that no matter what job you have or come to have in life, if you make the best of what you're doing, it won't feel like work at all. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Isaiah McClendon, and I, I'm an upcoming junior at Benedict High School. Um, I'm a part of the Youth Communications Team, 3D Modeling. I've been a part of this program for, and team for two years now, and it's been a very fundamental experience. It's also a very fun, it's also a very good way to meet friends and uh, meet people with common interests. This program gives me insight on future careers that I may be interested in or some that I may have not thought about. For example, architecture. We use a program called SketchUp, which is a professional architect, which is, which is a, sorry. We use a professional program called SketchUp, which architects use to build layouts for houses and other buildings or landmarks that have not been built yet. Throughout the eight weeks, we have been taught how to use this program and with help from coworkers and my supervisor, it was made easy and enjoyable. Well, we were given the assignment to build landmarks around Cleveland and SketchUp, and here's how they turned out. Um, that's mine, and some over here, too, from my other coworkers. Um, and all, I appreciate the opportunity granted uh, for the second year. Thank you to all my supervisors and staff, and most of all, thank you, Mayor Frank G. Jackson.
Good morning, my name is Caitlin Williams and I'm currently an incoming junior at Cleveland School of Architecture and Design at John Hay. This is my second year of being a part of the youth communications team, specifically as a journalist. Each year has been very interesting. This year I was able to learn a variety of new skills with my coworkers, Ari, Jay, Sherelle, and Jeremiah. Not only did we learn these new skills, but we also found a new talent, which was rapping, as you've seen previously in our music video. Now you are probably wondering, what is it like to be a part of the journalism team? Well, we research and we type articles to raise awareness about environmental issues. We also go out and interview fellow colleagues that are in this program. And we also travel to interview higher officials. Since I participate in this program, I have received and gained knowledge about the art of communication. Now, this, not only is communication used within this program, but it is also used in our everyday lives. For example, public speaking and working as an ensemble. Thank you, Mayor Frank G. Jackson and YOU employees for making my summer exciting and productive. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Will Lamerson. I am upcoming junior at New Tech West High School, and I'm a member of the graphic design team. This summer during the program, we worked on several deliverables. We worked on the superhero for the program, as you see in the video. It was a female pro uh, protagonist named the Land Protector. We also worked on t-shirt design for the program. We worked on rain barrel designs for the rain barrel crew. Another thing we worked on was the posters, as you can see around the room. Um, the last thing we worked on was a magazine graphics for journalism. They was writing articles and our job was to make visuals about it. In my opinion, it came out pretty good. We used Photoshop and Illustrator for most of our deliverables except for the rain barrels. This summer during the program was a fun experience for me. I learned a lot and I went a lot of places. Uh, and, I, and I made friends along the way. This, this is a program I would recommend to someone else. And I'm grateful I work with the people I work with this year. And a big shout out to our supervisors for putting up with us. Thank you. Um, good, good morning, everyone. My name is Carlos Ortiz. I'm a rising senior from John Marshall um, IT. And my internship was the IT for this summer. And I, I learned that everyone has their own story. Everyone has something different to teach. And some are similar to others and some completely different. Everyone has their own definition about what life really is about or what life really, what life really means. My mentor exposed me to what the definition of, of life is to her. They say smart people learn from their mistakes, but smarter people learn from other people's mistakes. <laughs> I tried to consume as much as I could in this internship from everyone because I believe everyone can show you something different. Every story contains something of value could be as small as opening a door or as big as saving a life. Every little action and every big action has a lesson. This program did not just expose me to a new field, but a new lesson, a lesson that there's always something more. There's so many fields out here that are un undiscovered and unexplored. Everyone's job and purpose are different, but something that I learned from the IT department is that every mu everyone must do their job efficiently and collaborate to have a successful finishing product. But something that this program also showed is that there's so many different fields from digital design to filmmaking to web development, even to laborers. These are all smart compartments that are used to create something bigger than themselves, which is the water, depart water department. <laughs> I learned that to create a whole, you must first compile the pieces. Every successful human body must first have all its organs so it can, must, so it can work properly and cycle the body. Like every company has several department compartments that must work together to create a business. There's always multiple pieces to a whole and must work together as one. That is what I've taken from this program. Thank you. Greetings, everyone. My name is Nadia Triggs, and I am an uprising senior at John Marshall High School of Information and Technology. 
Today, I want to talk about my experience with the Mayor Frank G. Jackson Summer Youth Employment Program. When my IT internship first commenced, I was not sure what I wanted to do in the IT field career-wise. My knowledge in web development is boundless, but I couldn't see myself doing it for the rest of my life. As I was working with my mentor, Darnell Thomas, I built templates for the Cleveland Water Department website. I began to conceive my attraction towards doing this. I was using both my creativity and my coding skills to lay out website templates, and I really enjoyed it. Eventually, I, ex I expressed my feelings about this towards my mentor, and he recommended me to look into UX design. As I took some time looking more into it, I realized that being a UX designer is definitely something I want to pursue as a career. Now with all the connections I made through this internship, I was exposed to a lot of different things that could impact my future in the best way possible. Being a part of this program is not only a job opportunity, but is a life-changing experience. As a wise man once said, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. In other words, this internship was the first step toward success, and there are many more to come. Thank you. They have been doing great this morning. Let's give them all a round again. Okay, we're going to move right along to our second guest speaker this morning. But before we do that, I'd like to introduce uh, the young lady who's going to be introducing our second speaker. Uh, her name is Dominique Dumas. Dominique attended John Adams School of One this year and participated in the PASS program, which stands for Program Apprenticeship for Successful Students. Um, apparently, this program also afforded her an opportunity to get a scholarship to tri -C. Um She also is a College Credit Plus uh, student and participating at tri -C, and she's earned in excess of 15 credit hours uh, from tri -C already. Hasn't even graduated um, from high school yet, so that's great. Um, so she's got a great start. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Dominique, Dominique, I have a stepson called Dominic, so it's hard for me. Dominique Dumas, give her a hand, please. Good afternoon, everyone. As Ms. Stephanie stated, my name is Dominique Dumas, and I was a member of the water cycle team for the first session with Sarah as my supervisor. Today, I will be introducing Jared Nobles. Jared Nobles, Jared Nobles is a director of the Global Corporate Partnership for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Prior to joining the Cavs, he spent three years managing corporate partnerships for the Houston Astros. A native of the Washington, D.C. area, Jared received his bachelor's degree from Florida A&M University and his MBA from the Fuqua School of Business at Duke University. In his spare time, you can find Jared playing football, hanging out with friends, or attending every music slash film festival available. And without further ado, please help me give a warm welcome to Jared Nobles. Thank you, Damo. All right, so um, they told me that I could come up and I could roll my sleeves up a little bit and make it a little more casual. Uh, so before I actually begin, there's two things I want everybody to do. One, you guys have been sitting down for about 90 minutes, so if we could stand up for about 30 seconds, just to stretch a little bit. That's the first thing I'd like you all to do. All right, all stretched out? Good, 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 good. Second thing, the second thing I want everybody to do today is it's not easy to get up and speak in front of a room of this many people. So for all the folks, particularly the students who got up and speak today, to speak today, let's give them a really, really big round of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so they, they told me that at, they wanted me to come and speak uh, and kind of give an inspirational message. And when I thought about that, I really thought about when I was in your shoes, when I was sitting in these seats, what was going to resonate with me. And I realized that, you know, instead of writing, you know, a longer speech, that I'd really kind of write some bullet point down and kind of talk to you all just about the journey. But what I want to do is I want to do it from the perspective of your big brother, right? Because I'm literally 33 years old. I'm not that much farther removed from you all and where you are today, right? And so I want to really speak to you as if I was speaking to one of my younger siblings. 
And so I would, if I was talking to one of my younger siblings, the first thing I'd ask them is, you know, how many of you all want to be successful? I know there's more, I know everybody wants to be successful, right? Perfect, right. So today, again, if I was talking to my sibling, I'd say today is really your lucky day because what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the jewels, the pearls of wisdom that are really going to help you be successful. And really what that comes down to, there are three things. If you want to be successful, there are three things you really, really need to do. All right, the first thing you need to do is you need to find your gift. Okay, then once you've found your gift, you're going to have to work hard. And the third thing you have to do is you're going to have to ignore the noise. And so in order to really help this story crystallize, help it make sense, I'm going to share a bunch of stories, some of which are stories that I've heard from other motivational speakers, some of which are stories from my own life. But I thought that if I was able to tell you all my journey and how I got to where I am, that it might resonate more than you being kind of putting together some, some more formal words. And so I'm going to start with finding your gift. And you know, I like to call it finding your genius gift, right? So all of us are put on the planet to do something special. Right? I'm, I'm a big believer that everybody here has something special and unique that they can offer the world. And when, when we talk about a genius gift, it really comes down to three things. Okay? First is, what are you passionate about? Like, what do you love to do? What is the thing that you, if you could do it for free, you would do every single day? What are you passionate about? The second thing, what are you good at? Right? I want to kind of, I want to make the difference between what you're passionate about and what you're good at, right? You may love to do something, but you might, like, I love basketball, but I'm 5'8", so I wasn't going to play in the NBA. That's just kind of how that worked out, right? Didn't, didn't get the hype gene, couldn't really, couldn't really make it, right? So I had to realize not only what I was passionate about, but I had to realize what I was good at, right? And the third thing, right, in terms of talking about finding my gift, was what was going to be something where I could make some money doing it. I got to live, right? I mean, I like nice things, I like to go places, right? So really, I'm trying to find something at the intersection of those three things, right? What am I passionate about? What am I good at, right? And what's going to allow me to make some money so I can live? And as I thought about that, I thought about, you know, how I, you know, really approached my career thus far, right? And, and again, you're going to hear the recurring theme of things happening in threes, right? Because they say that any good speech has three things you should take away from it. So every single point is going to have three things that we can kind of take away, right? And so when I thought about, you know, how I looked at my career thus far, right? And I remember being in your shoes and thinking that I had to have it all figured out, right? And what I realized was there are three phases to the career, at least to mine thus far, right? And the first was the exploratory phase, right? Exposure is everything. Exposure leads to enlightenment. You can't be what you can't see, right? So at the end of the day, I would encourage all of you to try everything. Say yes. Try. I can't tell you how many times I've heard the students up here today say, hey, I thought about this new career because I had this internship this summer. It exposed me to something different. I got a chance to learn something that I had not learned before. Expose yourself to as much as possible. Trust me, this is the time to do it. Get out. Try things. Take the internship. Take the class. Do whatever it is you can. Try something different. Travel. Go somewhere different. Go wherever you can. Get Expose yourself to any and everything you possibly can because you have no clue what's going to lead to you finding that thing you're passionate about. So once you've finished the, explore, the exploration phase, once you've kind of found that thing you're passionate about, the second step is to master your craft, right? And I love the, 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 uh, the engineer, the space engineer, her story around, you know, really it was, you know, she found that thing she was passionate about, and then she went back to school to do it again, right? And so at the end of the day, the next thing you have to do once you've identified that passion is become the best at it. Become the expert in whatever it is that you're passionate about. Right? And by becoming the best at it, right, you, you will therefore be more in a better position to be successful than anybody else because you will be the one that knows the most. You'll be the person that they go to to ask the, the answers to, answers, answers, excuse me, ask the questions to, right? And you'll have the answers to those questions, right? So master your craft, right? And then once you've identified what you're passionate about, you've mastered your craft. Right? The third thing that you're going to do is you're going to build. You're going to build whatever it is. You're going to build your career. You're going to build your own business. Right? So again, you, by doing those three things, by really thinking about how you can frame your career, right? first, exploring, right? two, then mastering the craft, and three, building, right? that's going to be a great way to really figure out, A, what you're passionate about and to build something from there. And I thought about uh, how I could relate that to my life. 
And so some of you have heard some of this story before, some of you haven't, right? And I, I had a chance to speak to you all earlier um, at the resume workshop. And so I'm gonna just share a little bit of my background and kind of how I got to where I am. And hopefully you'll see how I tried to follow that journey. So I went to Florida A&M University in Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, great experience, HBCU, I highly recommend it. We can talk about that later. So while I was in school, I had no idea uh, that this would happen, but when I turned 21, I threw a birthday party. And as 21-year-olds do, we tend to like really big parties with a lot of our friends. And so I threw a party and we had 500 people show up to a house. It's actually the only house party ever done in Tallahassee where it wasn't shut down early. We don't know how that happened, but it happened. And so out of that, I realized there may be something there. And so I went to a friend of mine who was doing events in the city and I said, hey, look, let's get together and let's actually throw an event. And so what we did was that year we, 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 had, all, we, had, we had internships just like you all and we saved all the money that we had made over our internships and we invested that money into an event. I'll never forget, we had made $3,000 that summer and I put it all into this event, right? And it was literally the hardest I've worked in my entire life. And what ended up happening was the night of the event, we had a line of, 300 people out the door, and we ended up having 1,500 people that night, and we turned $12,000 into $28,000, and all of a sudden we were like, whoa, okay, we're 23 years old, this was a great experience. And again, as we did it, we didn't think that we were actually building anything, right? We just thought that we were doing this thing that was cool, and we thought we were doing this thing that, that, that you know, again, it, it allowed us to meet people, and we, were the, we were, got to be the cool people on campus. But as we graduated and we decided to continue doing our events, and we started doing events in Washington, D.C., and St. Louis, Missouri, and Houston, Texas, and Chicago, as we graduated, we realized that it actually was something much bigger. And I moved to St. Louis. I was the guy there in St. Louis. And what we realized quickly was that because we could bring people together, there was value in that. And actually, companies wanted to work with our events. And I, again, finding the passion was, was a journey. I, didn't, I had no clue when I threw the first party where it would go, but we realized that we could get brands and companies to spend money with us to work on our events. And now all of a sudden, now we're doing sponsored events with brands. And I do that for four years in St. Louis. And then all of a sudden, opportunity goes, opens up for me to work at the Houston Astros. Now I can tell you when I threw that first party in 2007, that I had no clue in 2012 that I would be going to work for a major league baseball team. Right? So I should give you context. Now, I love sports. How many of you all are big sports fans? Great. So I'll never forget what changed my life in college. Uh, there was one joke that changed my life. Uh, Chris Rock said it. He said, Shaq is rich. Y'all know Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq? You know when he played for the Lakers? He said, Shaq is rich, and the man that signed the check is wealthy. Changed my life. Somebody was paying, Shaq was making $25 million a year. I was like, somebody is paying him $25 million a year. I want to be that guy. How do, I, how do I get to be the person that's paying Shaq, right? And so again, I, I had this dream of working in sports. I never thought that it would happen, but all of a sudden, by, again, by throwing this party, by like literally exploring and trying things, right, I had an opportunity to go out and actually build my own thing. I tried things. I figured out what I was passionate about, right? And I went to go work for a baseball team, right? Now from there, did that for a few years and then went off to go to graduate school, went to business school, because again, once I figured out what I was passionate about, the next thing I had to do was I had to master my craft. So I went back, I invested in myself. I heard several people talk about the best investment you can make is in yourself. I am a living testament to that, that if you bet on you, right, you will be surprised at what you can accomplish, right? But in order to actually bet on you, you need to have something to invest in you first, right? And so the first thing that I did was I went back and I invested in myself, right? I went to school, right? And then from there, I ended up being one of the only two African-American males at director level uh, in the, on the business side of the Cavaliers organization, right? So again, right, like at the end of the day, right, like when you're talking about finding your passion, finding your purpose, right, explore, say yes, try things, right, master your craft, and then build. All right, so we talked about uh, finding your gift, right? You know, I kind of shared that story with you, right? The second thing that we talk about is you have to work hard. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. This actually comes from one of my favorite speakers is a guy named Eric Thomas. Have you heard of Eric Thomas? Yeah. You have, have you heard the guru story? Yeah. No, not everybody's heard it? Great. So here's the deal. So he tells a story about a guru. And essentially, there's a young man, and he wants to make a lot of money, right? And he, he goes to this guru, and he says, hey, I want to be just like you. I want, I want to go out, and I want to make a lot of money. And the, guy, the guru says, you want to be successful? I'll meet you tomorrow at the beach, 4 a.m. So the guy shows up, 4 a.m., 
He's in a suit, should have worn shorts, right? And the guru says, how bad you want to be successful? He said, I want to be successful. He said, great, let's go out in the water. And he starts walking out in the water, right? And this guy, he's like, yo, this guy's crazy. Like, I didn't ask to be a lifeguard. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to make money, right? And he's like, I keep on coming, keep on going, right? And he's about to turn around, and he said, I thought you said you're going to be successful. He said, I do. He said, great, keep coming. And he gets to the point where the water's at the shoulder level, right? And he takes him and he dips him in the water. And he's flailing and scratching and flailing and scratching to the point where he wants to do one thing. What's that thing, guys? Breathe. Right, breathe. And his point is, when you want to be successful as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful, right? And But he goes on to make an even greater point. He says, a lot of you want to be successful, but you just kind of want it. Like, you don't want success as bad as you want to be cool, as bad as you want to fit in, as bad as you want to use your cell phone, right? Imagine if... You're, imagine if you took all the distractions away and you focus on your success every single day, what that could le lead to, where you could actually end up going, right? Like, think about all the different distractions. Think about the friends that you have, right, that aren't necessarily, you know, going which, where you're trying to go or keeping you from getting to where you want to be, right? Like, being able to, like, sacrifice, to give stuff up, right? So, again, I talked about the journey. I talked about going to business school, right? But what I didn't say was when I was working at the Astros, I worked every day from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. And if we had a game, that'd be until 10 o'clock. And I knew I wanted to go to school. I knew I had to go back. You know, I was trying to invest in myself, right? And so my, my, I knew I had to go back and study. So when I would leave Minute Maid Park in Houston, I would go to the library every night from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. every single night from Memorial Day to Halloween. Did, that, did it literally for three straight months, right? I'm talking about I cut out friends. I say, hey, I love y'all. I'll be back. I cut out parties, I cut out every single thing I was doing because I was so focused on making this dream come to fruition that nothing else mattered. And when you're that determined and that focused, I don't, I don't know if you all understand how much potential you have in front of you, right? And when you're that determined and that focused, anything is possible. From there, um, you know, the third thing you're gonna happen, the, the third part about that in terms of how bad you want it is really not quitting. Um, you're going to come across a lot of different hurdles along the way. Uh, when I left my job in St. Louis to work with the baseball team, I took a thirty thousand. I, I took a thirty thousand dollar pay cut. I, I took half my salary, basically. I literally took a cut of half my salary and had literally was like betting in myself, investing that I was going to learn something. Right? Um, when I talk about the friends, when I talk about you know all the different times I failed, like to get into baseball took me two years. I was literally flying from city to city, being told no over and over and over and over again. Right, but the faith is the thing that says, "Hey, like it's the it's the, it's the evidence of things hoped for. It's the substance of things not seen." Right, the faith is the thing that says, "Hey, you keep trying. You get up. You keep doing the thing. You keep trying to get back and make it happen." Right. So I can tell you that you guys are going to come across several obstacles in your life. We all do. It's not life. What I've learned is not meant to be easy. So I'm not here to sugarcoat it for you. What I'm here to do is tell you that you can overcome it. Right. No matter what, all you have to do is get through each and every single day. Don't worry about where you want to be five years from now, right? Worry about getting through August 3rd, 2018, because I can promise you to get to August 3rd, 2023, you got to get through August 3rd, 2018, right? So at the end of the day, worry about every single day. Win every single day, and I promise you, you'll be successful. All right, so we talked about two things so far, right? We talked about finding your gift. We talked about working hard. And the third thing I want to talk about today is ignoring the noise. And... You know, there's another, another speaker who, who, who tells a story that I love. His name is Les Brown. And he tells a story about a bamboo tree. And, you know, it's, it's about a guy, and the guy goes to China, and he sees these 90 feet tall bamboo trees. And he buys some seeds because he's like, I want to grow one of those. And so he buys some seeds for, you know, the 90 foot tall bamboo tree. Now, when he buys the seeds, they tell him it's going to take five years to grow. Okay, the bamboo trees take five years to grow. And he goes home, and he plants that tree. He, he digs a big hole, he, he, he waters and fertilizes, right? And in order for that tree to grow, he has to water and fertilize it every single day, okay? So he literally he goes, he digs a hole, he waters and fertilizes that tree, one year passes, all right? Second year, second year passes, he's watering and fertilizing, watering and, watering and fertilizing, watering and fertilizing. But the neighbors come around, the neighbors say, hey, you know, we hear you trying to grow a bamboo tree. We don't say anything. But he's watering and fertilizing, watering and fertilizing, watering and fertilizing, right? Year three comes. Neighbors come like, hey, man, you all right, man? Like, what's, what's going on? Why, what is this thing you're trying to do? There's, there's nothing growing. Like, what are, you, what are you doing? 
You should go ahead and get that up. Right? And that's the point where a lot of people quit. Right? Because the reality is, what he's building is underground. He can't see it. There, he literally cannot see the results of the work he's putting in every single day. Okay? Year four comes, and now they literally are just laughing at him. But he's watering and fertilizing. He's watering and fertilizing, watering and fertilizing, right? He gets to the point in year five. And year five is something when something special happens, right? Because in year five, over a matter of five weeks, that tree goes from not being able to be seen underground to being 90 feet tall. And the neighbors come back and they say, We knew you could do it the whole time. <laughs> right? Because people, that's literally what happens, right? People will look again. They will, when, when things aren't going well, they have plenty to say to tell you, Hey, what are you doing? It's not possible. Right? But when it happens, everybody's ready to jump on the team. And at the end of the day, there's several good lessons in this story, right? So let's go back and talk about a few of them, right? The first one, you're putting in that work. He was putting in that work every single day, right? Watering and fertilizing, watering and fertilizing, watering and fertilizing, couldn't see anything, right? When you all are putting in that work, whether it's going to school, whether it's working on a job, whether it's trying to get the next promotion, Right? The key is to show up every single day. You're not going to see the results. You might not see them tomorrow. You might not see them next week. You might not see them, ne- you might not see them for three, four years. But I promise you, if you go- show up every single day and you water and you fertilize, those results are coming. They will be there. Don't worry about what people tell you. Don't worry about people telling you, you know, what you can't be. Right? I'm in a room full of beautiful people, right, who've probably been told all over your lives what you can or can't be, and I'm telling you, ignore that, right? As somebody that literally was in your shoes, right, I I love y'all. I literally do. I'm here because I could be at work, right? There's a lot of things I could be doing. I'm here because I love y'all, right? And I'm telling you, water and fertilize. Do the work every single day, all right? Two, right, not only is it do the work, it's ignore the noise, right? Disregard what people tell you, right? Every, no matter what you do, you will not be able to please people, and that's okay. Everything that I've done in my life, every single thing, right? When I left the, the company in St. Louis, it was like, do you really want to take that pay cut? Right, do you really want to take that pay? Are you sure you want to do that? When I left the Astros, go to business school, they were like, are you sure you don't want to make money for two years, right? I, and from, from 2012 to 2017, I invested five years of time and $340,000 into myself, right? And I'm still, again, I know the tree is growing, right? So at the end of the day, you got to ignore it because you're going to hear every time you leave. When I, left, when I left school, my classmates were making two, three times what I'm making, right? When I left school, do you really want to go work back in sports? you want to work with that basketball team, right? But again, you got to ignore the noise. You have to believe in something. You have to know that what you're working on, right, Everybody's not going to get it. When I was throwing parties, my parents were like, hey, that party thing is cool, but where are we going with that? They never knew that throwing a party would lead to me being a director for the Cleveland Cavaliers. But now everybody's proud. Look, I love my parents. They mean well. I love them. I really do. Right? But I'm going to tell you that at the end of the day, everybody means well. But you got to be able to trust what's inside. And so, yeah, so again, I really didn't want to talk at y'all too much, right? There were just three things I wanted y'all to take away, right? Literally three things, right? So again, we, we, and we talked about them, right? So the first thing is, right, identify your gift, right? After you identify your gift, right, the second thing that you're going to do is you're going to put in the work, right? And the third thing you got to do is you got to ignore the noise. And I promise you, I promise you, if you do those three things and you do them every single day, you will be successful. But it won't be easy. You will have challenges. But work hard, and you can have whatever you want in this world. Nicholas Dent, that group, if he would come up quickly. Nicholas, Quantese, Gerald, Jordan, Miracle, Alondra, Marcus, Trayvon, your group. Okay. All right, we're going to start off with Nicholas Dent, who is a part of the videography team. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is
name is Nicholas Dent. As you know, I work for the Mayor Frank G. Jackson Summer Youth Program. I work uh, in the YCT, Youth Communications Team group, as a videographer. And I must say it's helped me gain and improve some skill, some skills. With the help of my supervisor, Tom, and my coworkers, Alicia, Alex, and Keishana. I've added new skills to my arsenal, and that has made me motivated to go more in depth with other things in the program in my spare time. Mainly skills I have adapted revolve around my department. I've learned to use more of an advanced camera, uh, and I've learned to use uh, editing software, Adobe Premiere, to edit things such as the music video you saw. So, and yeah, I, just had, I had a lot of fun doing it. Thank you guys, and it was great. Good morning, my name is Quantes Wilhoy and I work with Water Cycle. <laughs> in Water Cycle, we go to beaches and watersheds to pick up trash so no plastic or trash can be polluting our waters and Great Lakes. We pick up trash to prevent sewage overflow. Sewage overflow is when stormwater is so great that it overwhelms the sewers. Also, it helped the wastewater department from sewage to backing up into houses and streets. If not treated, it will be dumped into Lake Erie. This is important because we use Lake Erie for our water. My favorite part about working with Water Cycle is that we make beaches and parks more cleaner. Also, I learn newer skills and learn ways to prevent pollution. In conclusion, being with Water Cycle made me more aware of our city. Thank you, Ma Major Frank Jackson, for the opportunity. Good morning, my name is Gerald King, and I was an intern for the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. What began as a small internship to make some money and try new experiences has devolved into the summer filled with lessons, skills, and most importantly, connection with, connections with the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. When I first arrived, I had an orientation meant to familiarize new hires with the district. Shortly after joining the district, I was taking inventory and preparing for one of their biggest events, Camp Clean Water. Preparation included packing and carrying items, preparing material, decorating the location, cleaning and memorizing educational experience. In an effort to expand their work in a way that engaged youth, my coworkers and I connected with many different people to ensure a memorable experience for the campers. On the early Monday morning of camp, I see a room full of quiet and shy kids. Some kids looked as if they were still waking up, while some looked anxious to see what would come of that day. Our first day of camp started with an introduction for our work at the sewer district, and that was then followed by a good to know you activity and small experiment. To ensure students had a fun, educational, and reflective experience, we enlisted the expertise of current employees to lead the activities. For example, a chemist from the district showed the campers how to test bacterial levels of E. coli and determine the quality of the water in Lake Erie. We biked the historic towpath trail, which helped the campers slow down and connect their mind and body to the nature surrounding them. We, we also biked a tour through our southerly wastewater treatment plant to show them the process of what their water goes through. Ebony Hood, Jessica Schutte, Yolanda Kelly, Alexia Costello, and myself supported the camp by bringing our fun and high energy selves. We taught the students the importance of keeping our waterways clean through hands-on classroom activities. The camp consisted of three parts. A classroom portion, bus trip from the camp to the various locations of our daily adventures, and finally, a daily wrap-up, where the campers had a chance to reflect on their experiences. After camp, I attended multiple outreach events to be engaged within the community and give them information about the work we do at the district. At these events, we answer questions, give out material, and most importantly, engage the community. Although getting out of the office is fun, work in the office needed to be done. I was constantly traveling between floors, carrying items to the stock room, prepping items for the outreach events, taking inventory, and etc. I did not know this is what I signed up for. <laughs> I regularly attended meetings and talks that helped me feel as if my work and words mattered. All in all, I had a great time being able to partake in this experience. I learned something new, and through that, I was able to make connections. 
by putting in the applications and having what others call the good work ethic, I was able to get a full-time job at the district that starts on Monday. I would like to thank my supervisor and co-workers, and I hope you all had a great summer. Thank you. Okay, good morning everyone. My name is Jordan, and I am a rising 10th grader at St. Martin DeVores High School. Okay, I want to do this program because it's a good experience for me to learn how to manage my money and to keep me busy through the summer. Working on the Rain Gardens team. Involve main <laughs> I'm sorry. Involve maintaining the Rain Gardens around the city of Cleveland. Every day we will go out, every day we will go out, we plant and watch these rain gardens. Throughout the summer, we plant, plant, Throughout the summer, my favorite thing was planting because it's something that I do a lot at home with my dad and it's something that I enjoy doing. On days that we planted in March, and even though planting was my favorite thing, some days were really hard for us and if we didn't work together, it wouldn't be done without us. I learned that if you work as a team, when stuff is difficult, you can get everything done more successfully. And this is an important skill that I will take with me in the future. My biggest challenge in rain gardens was persevering when things got difficult. For example, one day the march got delivered a little bit late, and we didn't have as much time as we thought to get everything done. It was difficult for us when I thought we would never get done on time or impossible to finish with the time we had. But we kept working as a team, and I had a good attitude, even though it was a big struggle for us. But we were able to finish on time. I appreciate the opportunity of having this job for the city of Cleveland and I establish a savings account. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Miracle Harris. I'm with the CCP group, which stands for College Credit Plus. So these past eight weeks have been really interesting because I have, I was put in a great group. In the beginning, we weren't talking to each other a lot because we were still filling each other out, but now they're some of my best friends. And also, we would like to thank our supervisor, Danny, because he kept us grounded when we got a little bit out of control. Um, so we have been working with Mr. Richard Barga of the Department of Economic Development. He's given us two projects over these past weeks. The first one was a Brownfield Phase 1 assessment, which is basically to research um, land parcels around the Fairfax and University Circle areas to determine if they would need a phase two assessment, which is um, detecting any chemicals or anything in the soil. The second project was that, oh, wait, for the first project, we went a lot of places to get information on our parcels. We went to the county archives, and we also went to Cleveland Public Library to use microfilm to get um, the history of our parcels. We made a PowerPoint presentation on our first, on our first project, and Mr. Barga liked it so much that we actually got to present it at City Hall, which, is, if, as you can imagine, it was pretty nerve-wracking. But we did it, and we feel good about it because we had that opportunity. So our second, our second project was to come up with four ideas for a redevelopment of two more land parcels that we were given. We had a restaurant, a hotel, a boardwalk, and apartment buildings on the lakefront. Um, in addition to working with Mr. Varga, we took two college credit courses, Environmental Science 206 and Environmental Science 207. With that, we went on a lot of field trips, including the zoo and the Rocky River Reservation, where we had to wade in some water. It was interesting because I didn't have on any shoes and I didn't know if it was a leaf or a fish on my foot. Um, and yeah, we made a lot of connections over this week. Mr. Richard Barga, and also someone from the Cleveland County, I forgot his name, <laughs> but Tom Foley, Tom Foley, yeah, he's, um, he does sustainability, 
And he told us about a project that they're working on, which is to install, um, install um, windmills in the lake for hydraulic power. For hydraulic power. And that's it. I'd like to thank the city and Mayor Frank G. Jackson for this amazing opportunity. Good afternoon. My name is Brianna Reed. I'm an upcoming 11th grader at John Hay Cleveland School of Architecture and Design. I worked with DOW maintenance. We learned how to maintain a great infrastructure, which means that we were taught to properly water, nurture, and plant plants. During my time with DOW, we took a few uh, tours. My favorites were the greenhouse. We saw lots of plants. And we also went to the sewage company. They showed us how they clean and filter the water and push it back out to Lake Erie. I loved, I actually really enjoyed working with DOW, it was really fun. It was way better than I thought it would be. My supervisor, Myra, he really made it easy because it was really hot. And I don't like hot. It was really hot outside. But he made it easy. And Laura, she made it, I like her. She's a, she's a great person. And it was just a, it was a very positive working environment and a good atmosphere. And I would like to thank Mayor Frank Jackson for this opportunity. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alanja Mojica Melendez, and I'm an upcoming freshman at Lutheran West High School. I also work with illegal dumping. And that was this was actually my first job, and my reaction when they told me I was going to be working in illegal dumping was kind of like, wait, what? I didn't understand at first. But then, as the day went on, they explained what we were going to be doing and how it was going to go. Some days were bad, I'll admit, but some days were good. My coworkers, I, I was really shy towards them, but as the days went on, they became my friends. And my supervisors, Siobhan, Ms. Z, and Sherman, they made the job fun and made it a great experience. So I would like to thank them for that and also the mayor for having this kind of program for kids as young as me. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> My name is Marcus Rutledge, and I have just recently graduated from Cleveland Central Catholic High School, and I am a future inductee in the class of 2018 Hall of Fame from that school. Later this month, I will be starting my four-year journey at Youngstown State to pursue a major in forensic science and a, uh, and a minor in chemistry. Over the course of this eight-week program, I've had the opportunity to be one of three interns for the general manager at the engineering, the general manager of the engineering department at the Cleveland Water Division next door at 1201 Lakeside. The person who was my mentor, his name was Jose Hernandez. When I started my internship, I started off filing papers, but after a week or so, things changed. The other interns and I were given the task of creating an automatic water filtration system for a, fi for a fish tank. Though we built this system for a fish tank, my colleagues and I hope that one day our ingenuity will inspire others to develop our invention into a bigger patent. Overall, I enjoyed what I, what I have accomplished and the knowledge I have gained. 
Some things I have learned over the summer would be learning how to solder wires together and welding aluminum together. One day, I hope to take the knowledge that I have gained this summer to improve the lives of myself and those around me. Finally, a word of advice to anybody that is facing adversity or any struggles in their upcoming life. When something bad happens to you, you have three choices. You can let it define you, let it destroy you, or you can let it strengthen you. The choice is yours. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dave Onville, and I attend Gen Academy as a uprising senior, and I attended Nine Hill Water Plant as an intern. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Prati, and um, I'm a rising senior at John Hay, and um, I worked with Devon um, over the summer at Nine Hill Water Plant. Thank you. Yeah, she gone. <laughs> All right. I ain't gonna say good morning, I'm gonna say good afternoon, because we've been sitting here for a long time. We've heard a lot of, a lot of stuff that's gonna, you know, keep us going in the future. Yeah, yeah, that. No, I'm just, I quit, I quit, I quit. Stop laughing, everybody, stop laughing. It's time to be serious. All right, like I said, or like to say, I'm Trayvon Jefferson, as y'all can see. I go to Gen Academy, I'm an uprising senior, and I interned at Gary Morgan, the water treatment plant, West 49th, y'all know, by Edgewater. All right, this summer has not yet been what I expected. When you think of summer, you usually think of waking up late in the afternoon, staying out late, going to parties, having fun, but my summer was a little different. It was early mornings and no staying out on weekends, or I mean weekdays and Sundays because I had work. My internship at Morgan has been amazing, and I truly appreciate this opportunity. With this summer job, I've met so many different people and learned so many new things. I'd like to thank Ray, Danny, Jerry, Joe, Jenna, Darnell, Alex, Brian, and most of all, Mr. Trust and Ms. Guija, hey, right there, right there, who's helped me countless times in this relationship we've begun to grow. <laughs> Shout out Big E back there, you know. I also, I also never knew that so much went into the water we drink today. I would like to thank the city of Cleveland and Mayor Frank G. Jackson for creating this program to try to keep kids like me out of the streets and training them for jobs that they might be interested in. I also would like to thank the Gen Academy for introducing me to new people and guiding me in the direction of success. Thank you. But well, wait, I'm not done, I'm not done, I'm not done, I'm not done. I'm not done. So everybody was up here saying like they mentor and all that. I didn't really have no mentor. My mentor is Marietta, cause she kept her little heels on my neck. <laughs> kept them on my neck. And I, like, sometimes she would come off mean, but I knew it was like for the good, cause she like seen it, she seen the good in me. So Marietta, I ain't mean to put you on the spot or none, but thank you, thank you. All right, let me What a group of young people we had this summer. <laughs> okay, in closing, I didn't see, do I see Darren out there, Darren Suttles? He's in the back. Okay, in closing, I want you guys to remember that opportunities don't happen. There's a quote from Chris Kozer. Um, you have to create those opportunities. And then another thing is that you're not a product of your circumstances, but you're a product of the decisions that you make in your life. Um, I want to thank all of you for all of your hard work, all the employees of the Department of Public Utilities, Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District, Office of Sustainability, and in particular YOU. And at this time, I'd like to ask Darren Suttles, the program manager with Youth Opportunities Unlimited, to come up and say a few words as we close for today. Be very brief. I want to thank everybody who has helped make this summer an awesome opportunity for um, Cleveland youth. Thank you so much, staff. You are amazing. Uh, the youth always bring so much joy to my life personally and all these different projects. I love working with all of our partners. 
and I think it's time for us to eat. So <laughs> let's eat. So we're, we're, real quick before you get up, um, uh, Double Tree is going to come and they're going to uh, invite all the tables individually to line up and uh, for the buffet. Thank you. As an 18-year-old, I let my mistakes kind of take over my life. I was 0.5 credits away from completing high school, and I didn't do it. I got pregnant, and I was the main one working, so I did what I had to do to survive. Sentía que la escuela no era para mí. Most of my family, they never graduated high school or even let alone go to college, so I'm trying to break that barrier. My family never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew what I could become and who I could become as a person. Every day after work, went straight to school, studied hard, and, and it paid off. Sentí como que si quiero cambiar el mundo, tengo que cambiar a mí primero. I could not have gotten my diploma without my family. Mi consejera, ella fue lo máximo para mí porque me ayudó mucho con todo. I've been given an opportunity and I'm just thankful for it. Yeah, it's hard, but keep on going and keep on trying. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence and now I feel unstoppable. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. If only they were big enough to take their health into their own hands. But sometimes danger is where you least expect it. That's why they have you to protect them. Lead poisoning is one of the most serious public health issues for children living in pre-1978 housing. And many are never tested. Exposure to lead can damage a young child's brain. Take their health into your hands. Learn the risks. Get kids tested. Call 216-263-5323 to find out if your child is at risk for lead poisoning. Make sure I got this right. All right, it's coming. Brianna is ready to ride. Here goes nothing. She's taking the rapid to work for the very first time. Gas is a lot nowadays, so <laughs> definitely save. Yeah, it's like, you know, when you don't have to drive, you can just really take everything in, so. And how does that make you feel? I feel like a big kid. I should not feel like a big kid right now, but. Ta-da, made it. Made it in style, Brianna. It's easier than you think, Cleveland. Get your personal starter kit today and get ready to ride RTA.com.